We have one more that's 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 here that isn't on the program. Um, I don't know why, but the person happens to be here. Uh, every year we, we try to give our long-serving members a medal. So if you've been a member of the club for 40 years, you get a nice medal with your name on it. So this year, congratulating for 40 years is Jane Hankin.
then he continued, however, I'm not going to turn down the money. <laughs> yeah. Well, in that teaching, Jerry owned three Subway franchises. Uh, he was beat out for the poster boy by Jerry, and I think he was probably just as, just as happy for that. Now, unlike our fourth president, excuse me, not our fourth president, but unlike our 1917 president, Fred Merritt, Fred, by the way, was president of the RNA, and he was noted for not showing up at any meetings. He came, he came to the picnic, came to the next picnic, came to the banquet, but he never showed up at a meeting. He got transferred to, to Philadelphia. Uh, Jerry, on the other hand, had perfect attendance, uh, which is something for 20 meetings in, in a year, or 19 meetings, I guess, in a year. Uh, back up a bit, Jerry got introduced in the RNA uh, by way of the Junior Club. In the Junior Club, there were such luminaries running the, the uh, club at that time as Ed Meinhardt, Alphonse Cove, J.J. Pittman, Herb Vandenbroel, and Bill Elston. Some of the older members here would remember these, these folks for coming to every meeting. Uh, Jerry seems to have been an official in the Junior Club throughout his high school career. He earned the coin collecting badge in the Boy Scouts, where he rose to the order of the Eagle Scout and the order of the Arrow. Uh, from collecting with his dad and brother Ted, uh, to collecting friends, and to many leadership positions here in the Senior Club, he has done much to enrich the club. And I ask you for a round of applause for Jerry Hunter.
to the RNA president. He allows him to come down and actually take a blank medal and sit there at the orange press, put it in and close the door and push the buttons and strike one of his own medals. So I think that outweighs the secrecy part. But Jerry indicated and he was smiling and gritting it ear to ear. So I think it's a benefit for serving the club. Uh, there's a lot goes on in the four years of your office. So uh, we thank Jerry for that. And um, uh, what I've been doing, uh, one, one part of the procedure is going to the graphic artist. doesn't live too far from where I do. I've been asking the, the honoree to come at Mike to my house and pick me up and take me down to meet this guy so they can get to know each other uh, after having had some pictures taken. Well, between uh, Jerry and the other Bill, they weren't all that happy with the pictures, so Jerry had them done over again. And uh, it turned out much better. So, uh, it's always a waiting period. And uh, Jerry, like many of the other honorees, uh, has been anxious about what it was going to be like. So he did get to see it, as I said, but we're going to make the official presentation as the recognition of the club for the work they did and the reward for the club. Jerry, would you come up, please? Now I get, now I get to remove the cover. This is the bronze presentation piece. I've got it marked so it doesn't get mixed up with all the other ones. Jerry, I'd like to give you this medal in recognition of all your work and your, uh, and your gratitude for it. So thank, thank you, you so much. much. Mr. Ed Meinhardt, who was the advisor at the time, 
I still remember his address. It was 235 Mount Vernon Avenue in the South Bridge. And to remember his address after 60 years or so, uh, he made an impression on me as a, as a figure of the taught a lot of things, including respect for money, uh, respect for people, dignity, and a very warm sense of humor. A wonderful guy to be associated as a young man kind of coming up to fight. So we uh, uh, would go to his house about once a month for a, an officer's meeting, and it happened for many years until I graduated from high school. So that's I wanted to say a little bit about that, and the other thing are the symbols on my uh, my medal. The first one is the Eagle Scout symbol, and uh, scouting did a lot for me in terms of making me an independent person, being able to defend my, for myself. Kind of that's the kind of uh, training and things that I got from scouting that. I didn't realize at the time, but looking back on it years later, it was such a valuable tool for me, and I, I enjoyed it a lot. So I, that's why you'll see that scout symbol on the medal. Um, there's a couple things from scouting. The motto is be prepared, which is a really good lesson for, for people. Um, the slogan, do a good turn, turn daily. You know, service to your country, service to your organization, like the RNA, and uh, to be a service oriented person. The other symbol I have is the writer symbol, uh, which is just a kind of name. I loved writing uh, early on uh, as, a, as a child. My uncle was a newspaper writer, uh, an editor, and uh, he was kind of a model. And uh, I greatly admired him and what, what he did. And at one time I wanted to be a writer, but then I realized it difficult to make a living. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to be was a boxer as a youth. Uh, then I realized as I grow a little bit older that uh, you can get hurt quite badly. <clears throat> so I eventually turned to what I loved doing as a profession, teaching. Um, the other thing, uh, I wanted to uh, maybe leave with, uh, remember about the jokes. I used to say the jokes because I, wa I wanted to get everybody's attention. At the beginning of a meeting, everybody would be talking about coins, they would be talking to each other, and it was very noisy, and so if I told it, by the time I finished the joke, Everybody would be paying attention, even though it was a bad joke. Uh, so, uh, the funny thing, at one of the last meetings in May of 16, I think it was, seven or eight people got up and said a joke, and I said to myself, something must have gone over here. It rang a bell. It was amazing. One person after another. Andy Harkness, uh, everybody here, like seven or eight people. <laughs> wow, I started something terrible here. All these bad jokes. But of course, their jokes are all better than my jokes. Um, but I do have a couple of coin jokes I, I couldn't help but say at least one or two, and maybe the kids can figure out what they are. Now, Washington, George Washington once threw a silver dollar across the Potomac, and that's an old George Washington story. And uh, why couldn't he do that today? Does anybody know? Why would it be impossible? Bill Coe's got it. The dollar doesn't go as far as it used to. <laughs> okay, here's another one for the kids. They like dogs. I know that. At least uh, my grandchildren do. Uh, what kind of a dog has money? What kind of a dog has money? Another coin joke. Any 
idea? Anybody? A bloodhound, because he's always picking up scents. One more and then I'm leaving. This is the last one. Um, a quarter and a half a dollar were sitting on top of the Empire State Building. And uh, which one would jump off first, the quarter or the half a dollar? And you got to give a reason. Young lady in the back. The quarter would jump off first because it doesn't have as much sense. Ooh! <laughs> Okay. That's it, right? Over here, Caleb. Did you have any? Did you say? Oh, okay. All right. Well, actually, the quarter is the correct answer because the quarter has less sense. part of your answer, so. <laughs> okay, with that, uh, I just want to say that I want to thank all of you for coming tonight. All of you for what you've done for me along the way. And uh, I'm looking forward to future celebrations together that we'll all be to and come together in such good friendship as we all are good friends here. Um, and uh, in that, I'm going to give out a few gifts of my own to everybody. And uh, they're gifts of exonumia. Anybody know what that is from my table? Okay. Well, you'll find out what they are when I give them to you. Anyway, thank you all very much. It's been a great, great celebration. Thank you so much.